right now what's going on in Atlanta. So Trey Young's dad's involved. Okay, Trey Young's father's involved, and Trey Young's father wants Nate McMillan fired. Trey Young wants Nate McMillan fired, and they hired Nate McMillan as interim coach because of his relationship with Trey Young originally. Also, Landry Fields, it's come out from a I yesterday I texted Kevin Schoenard and he sent me a little video. And the reason Landry Fields was initially hired as assistant GM and now he's the head of basketball operation was because they wanted a player, a former player mindset. And now the other reason is, is because he has a really good relationship with Trey Young and he's been given the green light to execute any moves necessary to, you know, uh, I guess it would be to alleviate, to uh, remediate, to mediate the situation. What is your guys' thoughts? What needs to be fixed here? And is this a lot of, I made a video and a lot of Atlanta fans are saying, get Trey out. Trey ain't that guy and stuff like that. Initial thoughts. Jackson? It's absurd. It's right down. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not a big, you know, when they had the little scruffle, I was to catch Luke up. I had, I don't know how your star player and head coach don't communicate. Like it's not an eighth grade relationship. So I don't, I don't know how that even happens, but I don't like Nate McMillan. I, I think, I don't know how Trey Young's being the scapegoat here. Their team sucks, dude. They're just not playing. They're like, there's too many holes on the team. Uh, Trey Young's not the issue that they're not able to win. I, I think John Collins is a desperate player, but I don't know. They, they still have nice pieces. Getting Boggy back was huge. He's been really nice. AJ Griffin's been a nice breath of fresh air, but I still think the solution as opposed to trading Trey Young, which is ludicrous, is trading away DeAndre Hunter and, and John Collins. I think that's the start there. I mean, yeah, I don't know what's going on with, like, the Hawks right now. And Nate McMillan was supposed to be a defensive guy, but this team doesn't fucking guard anybody. Um, it's just uh, – the Bulls and the Hawks are two of the most toxic teams in the league, and I don't really know what they're doing because they hired Landry Fields because of his relationship with Trey Young. They kept Nate McMillan as a coach because of his relationship with Trey Young. At the end of the day, it's not Trey Young's fault that this team is bad. Like you said, they have a whole bunch of holes. And trading Trey Young, like those Hawks fans are talking about in the video, is not going to fix it. Because what are the odds that you get somebody with a top five pick better than Trey Young? Pretty fucking low. But Luke, Luke I hate to put your rant to, to kill your rant, but if you can set your laptop on a flat surface so you're not moving it, because I can hear your sleeves. Yeah, like every time you move, it's like. I don't really have a good place to put it, but I'll leave it right here to be fine. You have you have a night table? Yeah, I do, but it doesn't really like it doesn't like look good with the setup. So this is what <laughs> I'm gonna watch this. All right, try to put like a book underneath you. That's what I'm doing. All right, we're good. Yeah, wow. you sound you literally <laughs> sounds like I'm listening to fucking sleeves. Okay. <laughs> But no, in all seriousness, I think one thing that we're looking at this team is shooting, shooting. Uh, you and I, we talked yesterday, was that John Collins, as much as Jackson over here loves to disparage John Collins, there's a reason why people are into him, okay? There's a people a reason why 17 for getting. He's a good basketball player. He's not being utilized here correctly. This is a team that they just need to get four shooters. They just need to build themselves like the Houston Rockets where they got Onyeko Kongu and Clint Capella just catching lobs and grabbing rebounds from Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. Murray and Trey Young act as like Russell Westbrook or Chris Paul uh, and James Harden were. And then you just have shooters all around them. Shooters all around them, you beat teams with shooting. And then on defense, you just play Milwaukee style defense, which is you force teams to beat you on the perimeter and you protect the paint. Can you entertain this for just one second? Because we talk about John Collins being this good player. So maybe it's the injury coming back from injury, which I remember the last report about John Collins was that he's not, he's so disgruntled that he's not even when he's healthy, he's not even going to play for this team until he gets traded. Can you name one third option that scores four points in a game? It's not Christian Wood. It's not Jeremy Grant. It's not Drew Holiday. It's How not many Chris shots Paul. did he have? How many shots did he have? Well, I, I know he only played like 20 minutes. He took five shots, you know. How are you supposed to get in a rhythm? 
Well, I, still, most my point is just if you want to entertain it for a second, is most third options score more than four points, usually, right? Because that's you know more like a eighth or ninth option. At, this is a team though that we see when they win games, they win games because they shoot the ball well and they move it around. When they well, lose games, it's because they they it just doesn't work. There just needs to be a move made. That's what I think. They need. A fresh start. It seems at this point, John Collins just seems a detriment to the locker room, and I love me some John Collins, but it seems like it's in their best interest to move on from him. Their last good win was December second, which was twenty days ago, three weeks ago. So I get what you're saying. It's like, how are you supposed to score more than four points if you're just not being used? And yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, I don't think that there's a way that the Hawks. I don't know if John Collins' relationship with the team is salvageable. Uh, I, I just don't think he's – I don't think he fits the team anymore. They're not using him. He played 20 minutes each of the last two games, and he just didn't – wasn't really a factor in the offense at all. And last night he dropped the rebound that set up the buzzer beater. So, I like we were talking about it yesterday, me and Zero. He is a good player, and I think with the right fit, you know, he will be back to that old John Collins that we know. But it's just whatever, for whatever reason, the relationship in Atlanta has just gone sour. But – John Collins is far from the only problem with this team. So with what I was going to say is off there, John, John Collins is far from the problem of this team, but when you have someone disgruntled, that's going to F up chemistry. I think at this point, this is a team that would benefit going somewhat small. Let's run DeAndre. Like I know DeAndre Hunter isn't the best power, like power forward, but let's go get another wing. Like I talked about Buddy Heald yesterday. Like this is, and if fire Nate McMillan needs to be the other thing that needs to be done, let's fire Nate, okay? And then let's go out and get ourselves a guy. Guys, I think at this point with John Collins, you need to get yourself guys, like split his contract into multiple players. We, I mean, we've thrown this one out. I know Orlando wouldn't be interested, but what if we get a three-team trade done where you send him to Utah, Utah sends somebody to Orlando, and you get yourself Gary Harris and Terrence Ross from Orlando. Yes, now you have a glaring hole in power four, but you hope – DeAndre Hunter and Jalen Johnson can hold it up there. You run Neko Congo and Clint Capella at center. Then you got yourself at the wings, Boggy. You know, you got Boggy, Griffin. Now you brought in Ross, Harris. And then you got Murray and Young. And you still got Justin Holiday and Aaron Holiday. I think three point shooting is what solves this team. They, this is a team that should be a good three point shooting team, and they're not. And Trey Young, his play's been picking up as of late. Let's not act like he's like shitting the bed. Three straight 30 burgers. That's what I'm saying. Like, Trey Young's back to shoot. I know he's shooting 30% on the season, but I think for the last, what, 10 games or so, that's gone up to 32%, which isn't freaking amazing, but like, still moving the rock. And I think it's something he'll shoot through. A, a big issue I see with the Hawks is like, outside of Trey and DeJounte, their highest assist number is two with Bogey, and that's Bogey. And that's Bo well, yeah. <laughs> I think Bogey at this point, they need to use him as like the backup. Like, look, maybe they gotta find, find like Bogey's their backup point guard at this point because our Aaron Holiday yeah, worked Bogey out. Be a backup ball handler, I think. Um, but yeah, like the Hawks just it's too stationary on offense. If you have two guys that are dominating most of the assist totals, like they're just not they're not moving the ball, they're not sharing it, not spreading it around, and um. Uh, get, getting more three-point shooters would certainly solve that and boost up the assist numbers of those guys. But and they need some they need some three and D guys. They need some guys who not just shooters. They need guys who can defend as well. This do you think at this point going small like the Los Angeles Clippers is the most yes. powerful? Yeah, going small to expose those matchup problems. But they need guys who can at least defend. They're giving up like 116 points a game this year. One of the worst in the Eastern Conference. And again, Nate McMillan was supposed to be a defensive guy, and their defense has fallen off of a fucking clip. So you've old got school coach. Yeah. Old school defensive guy. I'm not saying he not saying he's a terrible coach, but he's run out his welcome with this team. His that style his, his coaching style for whatever reason just seems to have worn out. Outside of that fluke run in the playoffs, uh after that outside of that fluke conference finals run in the playoffs, this Hawks team has been average. So at the end but of the day, Nate McMillan's gotta go and that's where they start. All right, let me let me say this. One thing that people don't realize is during that run, what did they have? Oh shit, they ran this four lineup that they could run that they can't now. Uh, it was Clint Capella, Daniel Gallinari, Bardan Bardanovic, Kevin Herter, 
and Trey Young. Oh, wait, what's that lineup? Four, four out, one in? Oh, shit, this team's best runs in the last two and a half, three years have been when they run what? Four out, one in. And you got Onyeko Kong, who's great at this point, right? a high-level backup center, can rebound at a good rate. His only problem is fouling, and he doesn't have the most diverse offensive game, but he's more diverse than Clint Capel. But Clint Capel is one of the best rebounders in the league. So I don't get why you're not running out here this lineup where it's Trey Young, DeJounte Murray. Like, it, it makes sense to trade John Collins for wing players and a backup ball handler because another deal we talked yesterday, Buddy Heald and TJ McCollum. You get a backup point guard who plays defense and can shoot threes. He's not the best at it, but he's willing. And then you get another sniper and Buddy Heald. And this would allow you to run a similar Clippers line where you have Capella and, and Onyeka rebounding a little bit of Kaminsky, if you want, who's shown flashes of being, you know, all right for this team. And people forget Kaminsky's not a bad player. But then you run Griffin, Hunter, out on the wings and you run Hall Justin Holiday. If you got yourself a player like you know Buddy Heel, Buddy Heel, and then you have Bogdan and and as the other wings, and then you have Trey Young, DeJounte Murray. And if you can get a backup point guard there, it's Aaron Holiday. It's just let's just shoot as many threes as possible. Said it all, said it all season. The loss of Kevin Herter is a top three departure in the NBA. And it's all because Atlanta is a little cheap. So a lot of articles have said that that a lot of the stuff that has fucked this team over is luxury tax saving moves. Yes. You know what this reminds me of this reminds me of when those 2000s Phoenix Suns team let a restricted free agent Joe Johnson walk to the Hawks because they didn't want to pay him and Robert Sarver was cheap. It really hurt them. They never got over the hump and won the Western Conference, and they really could have used a wing scorer like Joe Johnson. This is what that reminds me of. I'm not saying Kevin Herter is the Joe Johnson is on that level. He's not. Joe Johnson is a phenomenal player. But losing him really, really hurt this team. Yeah, no, and it definitely, I just think at this point, Landry Fields, you're a player. You see what's going on with this league. Get on let's, the court. And before, let's wrap up. Let's say that'd be fine. Let's wrap up this segment just because I want to see who the Atlanta Hawks coaching staff is currently and i want to see who would be the most likely to be promoted to head coach so currently their coaching staff that'd be funny i mean that'd be an insane move what if they just because the celtics said they would let him walk for free and and let him walk to the nets for free and the nets were just dealing with the backlash of Kyrie and stuff so they couldn't do yeah. that at the time so the current the current guys on the roster joe prunty was the one who drew up the game-winning shot A.J. Griffin did. So it seems like Joe Prunty might be like lead assistant. They have Jamel McCl- McMillan, looks like the son of Nate McMillan as an assistant coach, Nick Van Exel, and Mike Lombardi. So in my opinion, it'd either be Nick Van Exel, former NBA player, longtime assistant, or Joe Prunty. And Joe Prunty's a guy who's been in the league as an assistant coach since 2000. He's 53 years old. He actually coached Milwaukee to 21 and 16 as an intern coach in 2017, 2018. So probably either Joe Prunty or Nick Van Exel would be the two coaches to look if they were to fire, if they didn't go out and just shut straight up, which has seemed to be the trend when you fire a coach. It seems like the last two coaches who were fired were originally like Chris Fitt. Chris Finch took over for Ryan Saunders immediately after firing, and it was going to be MA Udoka immediately until the backlash. So it seems like the trend is, is teams, when they fire their coaches, they don't care to find an interim coach. They try to find the guy. And Nick Van Axel's been coaching since 2013, took a little break between 19 and 2021, but he's never been an interim coach. So probably Joe Prompty would be the, the first choice if they were going in-house. But MA Udoka to the Atlanta Hawks. That's that. Put that down. Ma, let's hear from the the Boston Celtics fan, the legal eagle, fucking Luke Bermirza. What great would you fit, great fit? Uh, whatever the baggage that he had in the past. Um, Ema Udoka is a great coach. He would he'll be a success anywhere he works. And you know, being a defensive guy, had, had the number one defense in the league last year, and he leaves, and the Celtics defense is she hasn't fallen off a cliff, but it's not as good this year. It's not like it was the best. It's not like the best defense in the league like it was last year. The Hawks do not defend, and they need a guy like Ime Yudoka to get this team, you know, in shape. Basically, a bunch of the players, the reason why they liked him is when they were struggling in January, Ime basically just called him a bunch of pussies and started cussing at him in practice, and it, it flipped the script. The players responded really well. Um, he's a great guy. He's able to, he's, he's had an amazing turnaround before. He can How's your wife? 
<laughs> all the all the Hawks employees, though, hide your wives. But Ima Udo could be a great fit for the team. I just don't see it happening now. Yeah. You're muted. <laughs> Sometimes I like letting him ramble before. Okay. So <laughs> I know this is going to be a clip, but. This is going to be M.A. Udoke and the Atlanta Hawks are a perfect match. All right. And the reason for this is obviously defense, defense, defense. Sony's is going to hold Trey Young and the other guys accountable. But listen to this. Last year, this was a team, okay, the Boston Celtics that were second in three point attempts, sixth in three point percentage, but second in three point makes. That's what they need, okay? They need a guy who's going to bark at them and tell them, shoot threes and guess what last year the the celtics shot the 29th most two-pointers so they primarily just shot fucking threes last year and ma udoka is the guy who will get this team unlocked yo owner wrestler owner wrestler ma udoka and the hawks are made perfect if you want someone to take control and grab trey young by the balls that's fucking ma udoka just hide yeah, your wives. Brad Stevens, under Brad Stevens, that team took a lot of mid-range jumpers, and Ime Udoka phased those out of the offense. It was Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and a whole bunch of shooters, and it seemed to really work wonders for the team, especially in the second half when it all clicked. Ime Udoka is a perfect match for the Hawks. I just don't think that they will hire him now. If they do hire him, it will be at the end of the season. But I think they're probably just going to go with an interim coach right now, maybe elevate Joe Prunty, because we don't even know if they're going to fire Nate McMillan right now. Jackson? True. I love that. Just true. true. Let's move over and let's talk about Anthony Edwards becoming the lead facilitator for the Minnesota Timberwolves. This guy is doing everything. They've turned D'Angelo Russell into a shooting guard and he's playing phenomenal as it, but this has turned into Ant-Man, the passing man. What do you guys